Hi everybody, today I thought I'd show you uh, as it's a rainy day, very soaking wet out there, um, not much else to do. Well, there's loads to do, but I've got to get this honey bottled up into some jars and some pots. Uh, this is going to be a buckwheat honey, but I thought I'd show you how I reawaken or reanimate or melt down, whatever you want to call it, my honey, my buckwheat honey that has been stored since last autumn. So this is a defissures or a heating element or a, a decrystallization probe that runs on the mains. And I plug this in and I run this about 45 to 50 degrees C as it melts and pushes through the solid honey. So what it is, it's like a big potato masher. So you see here I've got an insulated top of the barrel, which helps keep the heat in, and this makes a big difference, okay? The room isn't, wasn't heated at the moment, I have got the radiator on today. So um, this honey has been here for about four to five days now. So I'm just gonna try and show you how I clean the top off, and then you'll see me putting it into some barrels after. See, uh, obviously we are taking most of the well, as much as the hygiene things as we can. I'm not in my um, packing house yet, but I will be. But this is just to give you some idea of how a beekeeper would reawaken this honey. Um, as I said, this probe is actually, I can't remember the make of it, but it's about 700 euros. It's quite expensive. But to me, this is a tool that is worth its weight in gold because I can put this onto the top of a barrel of spring and summer honey and within about two to three days usually it's completely decrystallized and the thing is if you warm honey in big containers in another piece of equipment like an api melter or a box warmer if you have stuff like spring honey it can take quite a while to decrystallize whereas this thing we call the potato masher it's a big heating element you'll see at the end it actually sinks down through the honey as it heats. So even though I've got it set to 45, 50 degrees, it's a guide that temperature, by the way, on the thermostat, it's never exact. Even though I've got it set to that temperature, it never reaches that temperature because it sinks more and sinks more and sinks more. But if you have it any cooler, it just takes a lot longer. And because this room is cold uh, and not heated and um, I want it to be efficient and I can't wait days and days. There's, there is a point where you've got to have reality. You know, you don't want to heat your honey too much and too quickly because you don't want to damage the quality of the honey. But at the same time, practicality kicks in. So I'm just going to lift this top off now and show you. So I have these two insulating boards. Do they just insulation? They're um, uh, standard, you know, poly. I can't remember the name of it now we use. Um, I've cut them to fit and they fit perfectly on top of that. So let's put those to one side for now. Inside here, you will see that we have this um, cream or wax that comes out of the honey when you heat it. Now this is completely normal, and this is exactly what I would expect, and I'd expect less from this one because this is buckwheat, and buckwheat honey um, has much, is much purer and finer and clearer when you first melt it down and you clean it. So this is the first time it's been melted back down or warmed back up, I would say. And then we get a slight load of debris coming to the surface. Don't forget, when I put this in the barrel, I only did a rough clean. So there was some debris on the top already. So I've made sure that that was scraped off first. Then we put that through the honey melter. This then comes off and goes through the wax melter as well. Okay, so in here, I've got some previous uh, wax. I took off a barrel of spring honey which always has a much thicker creamier top to it when you first melt it down so the whole idea is i'm going to just clean this off and i'm going to put my bottling machine right alongside here and then we're going to bottle the honey direct from the barrel into jars and pots and the great thing is my um, bottling machine which is over there actually on wheels it can move right to here wherever i've got a barrel so it works actually quite well so first we're going to clean this off, but also I'll note that, yes, I have got an insulated 
um, jacket around this that I made myself so that this helps keep the heat in and saves me a lot of time and energy when I reawaken the honey. And secondly, you'll see that the barrel is actually lined with a plastic bag. We call these barrel liners and there is a risk uh, with the barrels that we get that are second hand that some of the paint could come off and go into the honey but it's only a risk and it doesn't actually happen but I've seen it once so we had to filter all the honey again it's food grade paint it's polypropylene paint so it's safe if you did eat it or consume a tiny bit of it but obviously we don't want that to happen so every barrel now has a liner on okay and when I have a barrel that is uh, sealed now I have on this, the, this is the new label I've created. If you just bear with me a moment, I'll put it over here. So for instance, that's my logo, Mianeri de Corsel. Uh, the, the number of the barrel, it was number one. This was, that was the date it was put into the barrel, the 20th of uh, the 9th, which was the 20th of September, 2023. The type of honey, saint Raisin, where it came from, San Carlo Gildo. And the date of the harvest was the 27th of the 8th. It was a month after it was extracted. And the um, date it was put into the barrel uh, was the 21st when the barrel was sealed. So that's what I've got. So that's when I started putting it in. I made the label and that's the date it was finished. Now, the, I've also got here on the uh, percentage humidity. That was 16.4 that I measured on my manual machine. You know, my, my uh, I'll keep forgetting the name of these things. Um, here we go. On my refractometer, excuse me there that I measured on my refractometer, as you can see, and that was the approximate weight, because I know roughly that when we've got about this much from the top of the barrel, it's roughly 290 kilos, so that's just a guide. But this is for my traceability, so I know where the barrels come from, which barrel it came from, even though this barrel will be empty afterwards. And then I know the percentage humidity, which is good. Uh, I expect that to be under 17.5, which is brilliant. And this is actually pretty well cured, the honey. Um, and I would never expect this to go off. So that just gives you a little bit of an overview of how I'm trying to keep my records, trying to conform. This is all recorded as well in a book. And also it does tally up with most of the stuff on the board there. Because obviously when I harvested last summer, I got all the processes I did. But this year it's going to be even better recorded. So there you go. Um, now we're going to prepare the top, we're going to scrape off the top of the wax and then we're going to get the machine running, prime it up and start bottling some honey. So this is a bit of a difficult thing to do and show you but I'll do my best to show you how we remove the top. Um, there is the knack to it and you will lose a little bit of honey as you do it. I'm just going to dip down the, um, the camera and we'll be able to just keep that like that while I do this. So what I have is I have two scrapers, two um, ones are actually, well people ask me which is the best one, I mean these are fine, these are just a silicon uh, scraper. This is a silicon one that's got a metal insert inside of it and I find this really good because it's stronger. But anything like this is, is good as long as you've got two of them. So basically what, what we've got, we go around the edge first, we pull the honey away from the bag, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the heating element in for now. And because of that, it will actually keep the pipe away from the bottom of the bag as it sucks up the honey into pots. So what you do is basically that. You have to scoop it off the top and then you put it into your bucket afterwards. Now it's very sticky, very messy. As I said, you will lose a little bit of honey as you do it, but not much. And what do I do with this afterwards? Well, the, all of this will be tipped into the wax melter and it goes through to the next process of being either um, coming out in the bottom as a little bit of honey or melted down as wax and the byproduct of, from all the beekeeping that we normally, normally have. So there's not a lot on this at all. You can see that we're doing really well here. It's not easy to get off your spatulas. That's the word I was looking for before. I've had a bit of a brain fog this morning on terminology. I've just remembered that was styrofoam insulation I've got. And the reason why I like that is because it's clean and it, um, basically allows you to be fairly sterile 
and keep everything tidy without actually having honey stick into the insulation if you spill any. And it happens, you do get a few spills. Uh, one question I was worried about myself, this is the first time I've melted down a barrel of honey with my um, potato masher, we call it, or the probe made by Dan, Dan Vert, I think it is. I can remember that now. Um, it was that would the element melt the plastic of the bag and it seems to have not, because I said as it goes down, it kind of, um, it kind of melts as it goes, but doesn't heat up enough to melt your, um, to melt out any of your plastic bag. And if it did, I mean, there's no, no, nothing wrong. It just means that some of the honey may go into the side of the barrel and you've got to get it out afterwards. I don't know, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So that's the majority out. You're not gonna get a lot more off it than that unless you start wasting a bit of honey. So I've got sticky fingers now. I'm just gonna go and wipe them in the bucket of warm water I've got here and then that will mean I've got, always got something to plunge my hands into quickly if I've got sticky fingers and I don't spread honey anywhere else. So that's what I do. There you go, that's the honey in the bucket that I've just cleaned off. That's now reasonably clean, the top of that, to take that to the next stage. So this is my honey bottling machine from Sweeney Tea. You might have seen it before. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna direct fill these pots from the machine and I'm gonna to have to reassemble all the pump, but long story short, it's very, very simple and built to be um, totally um, cleaned and brought together afterwards after each time you use it. We have a non-drip nozzle as well that's all part of it. There's quite a process to putting this all together. I'm not gonna show you at the moment, but anyway, I'm just gonna assemble it all and you'll come back after and you'll see how I put my honey into pots. But it's such a great piece of kit, this, because it means that I can keep everything clean off the floor, away from everything else, and it just does its job. But the most important thing to me is this bottling machine allows me to dose each pot to the gram. So I always give one or two grams more, but no more, which is great. I used to be giving 10, 12, 15 grams sometimes in my pots before. That was way, way too much. Now I can do it individually and I'm not wasting any honey and it's clean. It's a single dose. I don't generally have a problem with spillages, which is great. There's several ways you can assemble this pump. I prefer to put the gears on first and then bring the body of the machine up to it like that. And it all slides on beautifully like that. It really does, you know? You know what they say when you buy quality, you pay your money, you get your goods, okay? And then we have these four flanges that go, four nuts that go on here. These are all stainless steel inserts in them. Everything is clean and easy to put together. But you must get this sealed. You must prime the machine well so that you have plenty of honey to suck up or to start the machine running because you do not want to run those gears dry, plastic gears. And if you do all that well, you'll have seamless problems bottling a lot of honey. I still don't use this machine to its best function, but I'm learning how to do it all the time better. And it's really clever because if you didn't have this housing on properly, you have a little light that comes on that stops the motor turning. So it's really quite good. Pretty impressive, actually. There we go. So first of all, before we start, I'm also going to give all the parts a wipe over even though I cleaned this machine meticulously and has had it cut covered over when I used it last, was actually was before Christmas, believe it or not, um, because I did a batch of honey just before I went away. Um, and I haven't used it for about two months now. Everything needs to, that is in contact needs to be cleaned. So the pump's been cleaned. I'm gonna prime that now as well. Um, and then all the surfaces you work on, I've also prepared some surfaces to put honey on after when it's bottled and I also got other things ready so that um, we can operate and everything stays absolutely spotless. It's so important. So we're gonna prime 
the Sweeney honey machine now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to prime it with some honey from the top of here, straight from the top of the barrel. But I'll put this camera down and try and show you. One thing I've learned as well, if you're trying to fill a syringe with honey, put the end stopper that's obviously already clean, this has been washed out, put the end stopper into the honey first and drip some honey into the syringe. The reason being that when you first push that syringe back in, okay, it lubricates the, honey, the syringe. And then when you come to suck it up like this, look at that. Beautiful, a whole syringe full of honey, easy peasy. Look how dark that is with buckwheat. So we're going to fill up the, we're going to fill up this with honey direct in the top. I don't know if you can see that, but basically I'm going to squirt at least two syringes full and I'm probably going to run a bit more through into a spare pot. And then that will lubricate those gears while it sucks up the honey. Now, because the honey is warm, it's actually easy to suck up for the machine. And what you don't want to do is overfill it at this stage. So that's nearly, but I'm actually going to turn this on and get it to spit a bit out into a pot underneath. Have another tub ready. That's clean, that one as well. That's what I call my syringe pot. So you can have it sterilized and you can let it go and not worry about spilling anything. So I'm going to get just a jar that I use, that I will use today. It's a clean one. That will go underneath and I'm going to turn the machine on. All the pots I'm going to be using today are going to be the 500 gram glass pots and also a lot of 500 gram um, plastic pots. What we have to do when we first set up the machine, firstly these pots are plastic and they don't go very well on the machine because they're conical. So we have to have a space between each one. But having a space between each one isn't a problem, providing it activates the needle fine which it does back program two which is the 500 gram pot okay so we're just going to just press star and let it fill one and then what I'll do is I'll weigh that and I'm pretty sure that's going to be underweight so I'll go to the scales here bit of a production line I'll weigh the empty pot. I'll tear the empty pot, we say. Okay, and I'll put that on. So that's 460, so basically it's 40 grams out of bin 500. So just for this one, I'll fill this one up quickly just to show you. So that's a 500 gram pot, what it looks like when it's full. And I'll put the lid on that one now, because I'm here. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna fill up a lot more quickly the problem we have is, if as the, as the honey is in the tube and the room isn't that warm, the honey starts to cool in this tube. So you really need two of you to work this machine hard to keep the honey coming up from the barrel all the time, to keep it warm, to go through the pump, so that as it goes through the pump, the temperature stays the same. But I'm going to add a little bit more to this one now and try and get that level up. And we'll do the next one, and that should add a bit more. So I'll, re I'll re weigh these, and I'm going to add a bit more to that one because I'm pretty sure that's still a bit low. Yeah, way too low that one. So I'm going to do the same a couple of times just to keep it going, and then. And then I can measure that, and I know that looks pretty much much better. That's 486, 
You see, we're creeping up a bit now. We just have to get the warm honey through. Once we start, we can bottle a heck of a lot really quickly. But you don't always have this hassle. That's 490. We're just running out the air. Four, eight, nine. So we need to add 10 more, I think. So I'll stop it after this one. So that's pretty good now. We've got this worked out. We're getting about 501 for each pot. I'll just get another one off, straight off being filled, just to check that. There you go, the same, 503. Let's get the next one that's just been done. That's what you want, but you've got to keep it running to keep that temperature constant to keep everything flowing through well. And this is what having a good setup is all about. This is a very temporary setup, to be honest, but it kind of works. So all I have to remember is to turn my pots upside down so that they don't fill in the wrong around. I keep them this way up to keep them clean. Um, just check that one as well, just to make sure. 502, so what I do is I generally do a few, put a few lids on, and then move on to the next one, next batch. But what you need is a conveyor belt and lots of room to be able to pot up stuff properly. Five oh four, that one. It's pretty good for me. Let's check this one. Five oh four again. So I might reduce that down a little bit. I'm going to press calibrate and reduce that down just by three grams. Enter. It always takes a while to get this set up, but once you've got it set up, you can really do a lot of honey really quickly. Let's check this one. I'm going to have to calibrate that again. Five oh two, that's fine for me. Stick a few more on, get this going now. So we have to keep these apart. When you do glass jars with this machine, you can actually have them right next to each other and there won't be a problem. But with this, with doing plastic pox, you see as it comes around the machine here, the bar is supposed to push them in the middle. And because it's a conical shape, it doesn't like moving that way. So I'm gonna do it on an individual basis really just making sure that every now and again I check the balance and make sure that it's fine. Take that one. These scales can be a little bit variable, and I agree, they need to be of a hygiene stand of a, they need to be of a food type standard, perfect, to make sure that everything is good. But I'm checking a lot of the start, like I always do, and these are all the right way. This is 501, that's 502, that's fine. But what I do is I just run a load off now, and I'll check the weights intermittently. So even I'm not using this machine to its maximum for this particular small job, it does a great job and it's fine. You've just got to be here to keep an eye on. See what happens, look, see the, the thing moves around and the, the, the pots that aren't level will move and it could knock them over, which isn't happening. So you've got to have space to put the pots you've just done. It becomes like a conveyor belt, the whole place and you just got to keep an eye on things as much as you can and keep your space going because once the machine's set up you really can do a lot of bottling really quickly and I obviously don't like moving things twice but sometimes you have to with this otherwise you end up with a bottleneck and it's not ideal but it is what it is
So with this particular batch, we're going to do a few in um, 500 grams. This is the size that the shop I supply at the moment sell most of. And I'm happy to sell it in this because this is obviously buckwheat. It's the highest value honey that I have. Um, and I want it to be, you know, well received and I want it to be perfect. So um, they get as much as they need in this size. But also I'm going to put some into one kilo pots because they sell a bit in that. And also some into my own pots that are going to be glass from now on because this is buckwheat and I'm not doing another batch afterwards. I'm doing just this one batch until probably late in the summer next, this year, hopefully if I have some more. Um, I'm not going to do any more until then. So I need to do, my new labels will be coming out, but they're not ready yet. They're just in the design stage. We're nearly finished. We're backwards or forwards with the designer a lot. I'm happy with it now. We're just finalizing some tiny details and I'm waiting for them to come back for me on that. And then that will go to print and we'll see where we go with that. So what I'll do is when I finish this barrel, I'll come back to you and I'll show you how we take the probe out, let it drain. And I've never dealt with this bag before being empty, but then we'll drain that down, put the probe into the next barrel of honey, which is going to melt down some spring honey again. Oh, sorry, some summer honey, which is uh, this barrel here. That's going to be melted down after. And then we'll take it from there because that's got to go out next week as well. So I'll leave you for now, get this done and come back to you afterwards. So as you can see, we bottled up quite a bit of honey. The barrel is empty. Um, this was, <laughs> unfortunately, I bought these pots and it turns out that the front is purple. I don't know why and how that's like that. And that's my one kilo pot, so I've just done a few of those. And I've also done some into some 500 gram jars, which I'll be using when my new labels come out. So that's a load of it. Oh, I've done 300, 500 grams in the plastic, about 80 in the glass pots and the rest in one kilo pots. So everything is good. Loads of honey to label now. That's all the jars in the 500 gram. See how dark that stuff is. You can't even see through it, look. It's incredible. And a bit more there and just a few to finish off on the scales here. Because as you finish the, um, uh, the honey, obviously, an airlock gets in from the bottom because the barrel's empty. But you can see that the machine I've got here protects the, um, the bottom of the hose from sucking onto the bag. So it works out quite well. So I'm very pleased with that. The whole thing is empty. Now I'm going to disconnect the, the, the hose and I'm going to put a funnel on the end, my big funnel, which will then allow me just to pot up the last few. And that will then be done. So first I've got to get out the, um, take out the, uh, the potato masher. We, you can see why we call it potato masher. Take that out. And then I'm going to wash it and then it's going to go into the barrel next door because that's got a barrel of summer honey in there to melt down for a client for next week. So lots to do, <laughs> loads of stuff to sort out. That will be running in a minute. I'll show you as I do that. So this is why you need to plan a big sink drainer in your workshop, because I can rinse this off here in my own kitchen, but it's only just possible. 
Luckily this tap has got a detachable part and you can get to the end here, but at least this is clean now and is ready for going back into the next pot of honey. So I'd like to rinse it, but obviously between types of honey, but uh, that's why you need a big sink. So I've got the funnel on ready and I've taken out the potato mash or the melter. The good news is this is pretty clean in there. On this side, we've got a little bit of honey that's come from somewhere on the bag, but generally the whole thing I can lift up. I'll have to put that, I'm gonna cut the corner off and put that into a bucket and then tip the bucket into uh, the, um, the top of that to be able to use the last this black buckwheat up. But the whole thing is, to be honest, is very good, I'm very pleased. Nice and clean, eh? That's what barrel plastics do, keep everything sweet. Pretty clean, I reckon. That's all that came out of the bag. I cut the corner off. It was so easy to get the rest out. And this bag is disposable, but I think you could say it's a good investment for that little bit of plastic. So that now goes into the top of the funnel and we'll get that into a few pots. So there you go. That's the next barrel opened up and ready. This is summer honey and it's nice and soft. It's all gonna be melted down. I have just washed my hands, believe it or not. And that will take a couple of days. Uh, I'll plug it in later as soon as I finish with the lead. It's actually the same lead that runs my machine. So the machine is done. That's just dripping through. I might get a couple more drops out of there. I'll take all off and then we can say the whole thing has been done. I'm very pleased with the way this has gone. Um, I'm far rapidly using up my honey, which I'm really pleased about. As you can see, I've got quite a good stock now. Buckwheat, that's all in pots and ready to use. So I'm pleased with that. We did have a spillage, I'm not gonna deny it. Slight spillage on the floor there. Slight spillage behind. And it didn't get, the thing I have a problem with is if you get honey into the switch here, it's a pain because you've got to take it out. And if you can hear that. That's the most important part because that signifies the on and off for the machine. So in support, you don't get any honey in that, but it's built well. Built well anyway, it's constructed well. So very pleased, it went all very well today. So, so this is a great machine suite you've got. There's other models you can get. You can get ones that just fill without the rotating table. I'm glad I bought this complete model. Um, a good investment, I think, for long-term. To be able to bottle an entire barrel. In the future as well, I'll be able to raise up the barrel so it'll be actually easier for my machine. Won't have to suck up the honey so hard from the pipe, but... Uh, yeah, all good. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you again soon. Catch you on the next one. Bye for now.